hello everyone uh, my name is darshan shantamurthy uh, i'm the founder ceo of cisa uh, we are uh, a global uh, forensic investigator and a cyber security company headquartered in india uh, i'm happy to be part of this event the reason why we are here together is for our launch of uh, cisa top 5 uh, and uh, i would like to begin with uh, introduction of our uh, distinguished guest who we have to give today uh, for uh, releasing our uh, cisa top 5 report uh you know general pant uh, is an internationally recognized cyber security expert who is presently uh, leading our uh, national security uh, secretariat of india uh, under the prime minister's office uh, he he in his capacity is responsible for coordinating all activities across multiple sectors to ensure a secure and resilient cyber place cyber space within the within the country i would request uh, general pant Uh, to address us uh, a few words and then launch the report for all of us uh, over to you general pant thank you for taking this opportunity thank you darshan and uh, greetings of the day to all the attendees of this event uh, it's a privilege to release the cisa top 5 forensic driven learnings for the financial year 2022 to 23 uh as i have come to know cisa is one of the top 4 global pci forensic investigators and this report that they have made is based on forensic investigations compliance audits security operations and incident response between 1st april 2020 to 31st december 2021 now i don't have to remind you as to what a crucial period this was from 1st april 20 to 31st december 21 because this is the period where we witnessed the digital transformation due to the covid pandemic and as a result of the digital transformation and the increase in online services in almost all the sectors we found a exponential increase in cyber crime uh we have always said as per the cert report also that in this period there was a 500% increase in cyber crime and uh, there was a, a world economic forum report also which said that this uh, digital uh, cyber crime is the biggest man made risk to the economic progress of nations so all this happened during this period and you may also recall of the big ticket attacks that took place in the us starting from the solar wind to the colonial pipeline to the jbs pools to kesea most of it was during this crucial period so i think taking the lessons learned from this period and coming out with a report is 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 very important because i come from a background where the slogan was the more you sweat in peace the less you bleed in war so we have always believed in learning from the mistakes of the past from the lessons of the past and to that extent this report becomes very important i can also see that this report is largely based on the mitre attack uh, framework which uh, as you know documents the attackers uh, breach process and his ttps uh, during the uh, attack but uh, let me share with you that the attacks are getting more and more sophisticated and my concern at the table where i sit is more on its impact on the critical infrastructure and to that extent the uh, ics and the scada and the uh, ot part is also a matter of concern which probably this report does not address as it is based mostly on the financial crime part but i must highlight that that is also a very important aspect especially in the banking also when you come to the core banking system etc this aspect becomes important another aspect that is of concern to me is the use or the misuse of iot devices while carrying out attacks and with uh, 5g on the horizon all of you are aware that government of india has announced the launch on 15th of august for 5g services in india where an entire ecosystem will be created which will also include iot devices and edge computing etc so the cyber security aspects of that are very important to be considered today at this stage so that we are prepared for tomorrow 
Why I'm saying is because since this report covers 22-23 and 5G is going to come by that time, so we must also address uh, that aspect of uh, 5G, which includes the IoT and the other, you know, the AR, VR, etc. aspects. But I'm glad that uh, CISA has uh, compiled this report and it would be my pleasure to launch it uh, whenever Darshan asks me to do. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Dr. Pandi, if you can release the report for all of us yeah. for the benefit. Um, fantastic. Thank you, Dr. Pant, uh, for your valuable time and publishing our report. Uh, we're looking forward to your comments and feedback for our upcoming remotes as well. Today, we've got, uh, in addition to Dr. Pant, uh, Dr. Ravi, uh, who's our Chief Product Engineering Officer um, based out of the Bay Area, and uh, uh, Renju, uh, who's our uh, who leads our forensics and, and also the, the brain behind the report. Between both of them, we would actually uh, be able to understand and, and further uh, give a little bit of a context of why this report um, actually uh, came into culmination. Uh, so with that, uh, I would start with, uh, you know, asking this, uh, the first question to uh, Ravi, um, you know, what do you think is the importance of this report? And, um, you know, why do we do this publication? Uh, Ravi, if you could just give us a few thoughts about uh, your idea and your, uh, you know, your take on this, that'll be amazing. Thanks, Darshan. Uh, I think uh, this uh, report is important. We, we we are one of the top four uh, global forensic investigators, and we do a lot of investigations uh, related to payment security. And then we have a managed detection response service. And uh, the, this report captures our learnings as to what, uh, what typically goes wrong and how breaches take place and how to avoid those breaches. And those learnings are captured in this report. And the reason we do this is we want to share these learnings to our customer base and the general world out there so that they can be very proactive and uh, pre uh, prevent these breaches from happening. Thanks, Ravi. And just to build on what Ravi said, um, one of the key things that we've often been asked is, um, since we've been doing a lot of investigations, what is that uh, as a community uh, we get to learn? And uh, we thought it uh, you know, uh, fit to actually culminate and, and, and use that um, uh, and structured in such a way that it will benefit the industry. So, so absolutely agree with that, Ravi. And I'm glad that we could bring out this report. Renju, um, you know, you, you being one of the, uh, you know, the brain behind this uh, report, uh, do you want to quickly give, uh, you know, a few thoughts on how uh, how did you go about structuring this report, and, and uh, you know, give us a sense of how the report is structured. When we started off with the report, uh, we thought about the uh, structure part and one of the ideas that we came across was that let's take the uh, path on how the intruder actually uh, meets uh, his objective. That is uh, starting from how that regular intruder uh, is able to uh, uh, say create that initial ingress point uh, and uh, come inside a network, how he's able to create a persistence within the network, how he's able to move between the various uh, systems and finally meet their action and objective uh, part of it. So we have structured it in such a manner that uh, it's been in a, what are the steps that we identify as part of the ingress point? Uh, what uh, What's the trend that we have observed and what can be done to prevent that ingress point? Second is, uh, what's the trend that we observed as with respect to the lateral movement and what uh, controls the entities can, uh, or companies can implement uh, for uh, uh, restricting that particular uh, lateral movements. And finally, the last the action objective. So the intent of the report is to ensure that uh, even if the intruder, if, even if an environment gets breached, the intruder is not able to meet uh, their action and objective because that nets, then uh, uh, it's uh, the end game uh, part of it. Also, uh, we have built it uh, with based on the MITRE uh, framework for each of these uh, pointers so that uh, you can always reference it back with the industry uh, standard as well. Thanks, Renju. Uh, just to build on what Renju said, uh, one of the key things that we have tried to do is, uh, uh, you know, keep it uh, simple. Uh, so that's one of the reasons, uh, of course, you could actually have uh, more learnings than uh, five. Uh, but then, um, you know, for the, uh, you know, we often get asked why only five learnings, but uh, the idea is that, you know, you would have more than five learnings, but the five key learnings so that we know which are the ones which we prioritize uh, and uh, can actually make sure that we, uh, 
you know we we take steps towards uh, through cyber security so so one follow up question renju is um, the coverage of the period uh, you know coverage of this report and the period uh, that we have covered and it it encompasses a lot on the during the you know the pandemic uh, time um, does that have any influence or uh, do you want to co- quickly comment on the the period uh, of uh, the coverage of the report um, especially the 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 months uh, when we actually went through pandemic yes definitely uh, the reason why we included the pandemic period is uh, definitely there was a huge change in the way the organization works with the remote culture with the lockdown and everything coming up and uh, what we observed was that the intruders also changed the approach in which they were uh, targeting the uh, entities part of it so that's the reason why we have specific, specified the uh, uh, the pandemic period because there's a lot of change with respect to digital transformation with the work from home uh, and everything and what all controls which were uh, even implemented were been exploited by the intruders to gain access to the uh, network uh, part of it so that's the reason why we specif- we specified uh, uh, the pandemic period for the report great thanks ranju ravi uh, on, on you know on a follow up there uh, last question to you is uh, at the end what can readers expect from this report what do you think uh, should be the key takeaways and what could readers do uh, from this report so the the report has the top five learnings so uh, enterprises and organizations can actually implement those learnings but uh, Uh, they are at different stages at, uh, so the first thing i would advise them to do is uh, to score themselves in uh, each one of those learnings where they stand uh, from 0 to 10 and then uh, based on that uh, work with the management and um, and they get a scorecard as to what the security posture looks like in terms of those learnings and then go about implementing so that they can be they can reach that score of 10 on each of those learnings and um, implement all of what's there in those learnings and uh, and hopefully with all that implemented they will drastically reduce the number of potential breaches that can happen absolutely ravi uh, one of the key things that i wanted to add uh, uh, we've seen many organizations do this very successfully uh, uh, you know take the cisa top 5 and present it to their leadership team their board in terms of how uh, they have uh, you know uh, how they fare Uh, a very candid assessment and then an action plan uh, over the next three to six months in order to improve uh, the security posture. So, absolutely agree with you uh, on that space. Uh, with that note, um, thank you, General Pant, uh, Ravi, and Renju, uh, and the entire CISA team for putting together this uh, valuable report. Uh, I'm sure that it's going to help the industry, uh, uh, you know, implement true cyber security. Um, I would urge each one of you to go and download the report uh, from our website. Uh, www.csinfosec.com uh, the report is available for your consumption and we look forward to getting feedback and your valuable comments thank you one and all